Hello friends, I am Rahul and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, we will see some interview questions on AWS Lambda service. Our first question is, what is AWS Lambda? AWS Lambda is a service which provides you a facility to deploy your serverless architecture. Here, you don't have to purchase any EC2 instance. Also, you don't have to install any web server or any application server on the EC2 instance. It's all been taken care by the AWS Lambda service. Our next question is, what is serverless computing? As we have seen in the last question that AWS Lambda is providing you a serverless computing option. In serverless computing, we don't have to manage the server which we are using to deploy our application or website. This all been provided by a service provider. In our case, it is AWS Lambda service. In serverless computing, we don't have to pay for the server, but we have to pay as per our usage. Our next question is how AWS Lambda works. In AWS Lambda, we have to upload our ready-made code and AWS Lambda will take care of the installation and configuration of the application server. Also, it takes care of the creation of the server in background. So AWS will create a server or a container in backend and it will deploy your code in that container or server. In AWS Lambda, we have to provide the details like which server we need, like we have to provide the memory requirement. Also, we can provide a networking details like VPC to work with AWS Lambda. Suppose we have an application of Python, then AWS Lambda will automatically install Python related application on the container or a server so our code can be deployed to the Lambda easily and we can directly use it without any hassle. Our next question is which programming languages are supported by AWS Lambda? Currently AWS Lambda supports Java, PowerShell, Node.js, Go language, C hash, Python and Ruby code. It means we can directly upload the code of Java, PowerShell and other languages to AWS Lambda and we don't have to worry about the installation and the configuration of the application server like Django, Java Runtime and PowerShell. We can directly upload our code to AWS Lambda. We can also write it in the Lambda or we can upload it in form of a zip file. AWS Lambda will extract the file, it will extract the code and it will deploy it to the container or a server in backend. Our next question is, what is a trigger in AWS Lambda? Trigger means how we are invoking the Lambda. Maybe it is a load balancer, API gateway, event bridge or any third party tool uh, using which we are triggering the Lambda. We can trigger the AWS Lambda from a simple email service as well. Also, we can trigger this Lambda from another account using Assume Roles or a SES service. Our next question is, how to access AWS resources from AWS Lambda function? This is a scenario based interview questions. Here, here we have to select the VPC details while launching the AWS Lambda. So AWS Lambda will launch the container or a server in the same VPC from where you want to access the resources. Our next question is, I am not able to list AWS VPC components in AWS Lambda function. Why? Many of time we try to access few resources from AWS VPC like NIC cards for further actions. 
but many a times we are not able to list all the NIC cards from a particular VPC. So here we have to select the VPC while launching the Lambda. So AWS Lambda will deploy the container or a EC2 machine in the same VPC in backend and then it can be very easy to list down the other resources which are available in the same VPC. Our next question is how to automate input parameters in AWS Lambda function. This is a scenario based interview questions and this comes in a picture when we have dynamic parameters like EC2 instance ID which cannot be hard coded in the parameters so we have to make the arrangement so AWS Lambda can fetch these details automatically. So we can use event bridge and simple email service to trigger AWS Lambda. While triggering the Lambda we have to provide events. So in the events we can provide the parameters and using these events we can perform further actions. Our next question is how to trigger AWS Lambda based on an event. For example suppose we want to ensure the particular tag should be present on an EC2 machine. So how to ensure it? We want to shut down the server where the particular tag is not available. So what we will do is we will create a event bridge rule. In that rule we will mention like when the server will come up in a running state it will trigger a particular lambda. So the event bridge will fetch the instance ID and it will pass it to the AWS Lambda as an event. AWS Lambda, the code which are present in the AWS Lambda will fetch the instance ID and it will query it and it will check the particular tag is present or not. If the tag is present, it will keep it running. If the tag is not present, it will simply shut down the server and it will notify as a ACS that this server is not complying with the rules and that's why we are shutting down the server. Our next question is how to store AWS Lambda logs. By default AWS Lambda writes the logs to the CloudWatch logs but here we have to provide access to CloudWatch logs. When we deploy a AWS Lambda we have to provide the details of IAM role which has the certain permissions. In that permissions we have to include our permissions for CloudWatch logs. If we have it then AWS Lambda will create a log group with the same name as the Lambda has and it will store the logs in the CloudWatch logs. If you want to log any custom logs in the CloudWatch log from AWS Lambda then we have to use a logger utility if we are writing the code in Python. Similarly we can push our custom logs to AWS CloudWatch logs. Thanks for watching the video. Please like, share and subscribe to my channel.